Now, prisons in England and Wales are full, so full, the government's had to turn to police cells to house prisoners. Tonight, we can reveal the cost is running into the millions. Now, this is called Operation Safeguard. It's an emergency scheme allowing the Ministry of Justice to take over police cells and use them to lock up prisoners who, well, should be in prison. There's no scheme like this in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Here's the prison's minister triggering it in November 2022. I'm announcing today that we've written to the National Police Chiefs Council to request the temporary use of up to 400 police cells through an established protocol known as Operation Safeguard. This will provide the immediate additional capacity we need in the coming weeks to ensure the smooth running of the prison state. Far from lasting weeks, in February the scheme was actually extended and we've discovered this temporary measure is still being used. Now we've obtained a log showing police cells became prison cells on 871 occasions over roughly a three month period to June. Forces in the northwest and northeast were called upon the most. More than 200 times in Greater Manchester alone, Northumbria police cells were used 98 times over those three months, and West Yorkshire 69 times. So prisoners were regularly being shuttled to and from police cells at Normanton Police Station near Wakefield, where over three months they housed 77 prisoners who should be in prison, with a cost of £263,000 in police overtime alone. That's around £3,500 per prisoner per night. So putting prisoners in police cells costs the government far more than prison, where the average annual cost is £46,500 over a year, or £130 per prisoner per day or night. And we've obtained data showing the costs of putting prisoners in police cells, overtime, interpreters and so on, means 13 police forces have billed the government £4.9 million pounds so far. The overall bill is likely to be far higher as several forces didn't provide data. But even this £4.9 million could fund more than 100 prison places for a whole year instead of the odd night in police custody. Even though all the costs are, uh, are covered, um, we need a system for people in West Yorkshire and beyond that works for the longer term. We do not want uh, a prison system that is overcrowded, uh, overworked, where staff uh, are going off on sick, uh, being harmed every day because of the conditions that they're working in. Uh, that's not helping anybody. We want a criminal justice system that is compassionate, but more importantly, that is effective and that works for the majority. Currently, it's a crisis, it's a mess. So where are those vital prison places? The government's trying to build new cells. There'll be 1,500 more when HMP Millsyke opens in Yorkshire. But the Ministry of Justice target is 20,000 new prison places by the middle of this decade, and it's admitted it won't meet that target. We now have to go elsewhere to provide cells to sentenced prisoners. And of course, the only option we've got in the absence of our own cells is to utilise police cells. Now, the police are under-resourced. They need those cells for their own arrests. And we have to pay their overtime bills and their wages. So it all comes from the MOJ and HMPPS budget. So the costs rack up, not least because some forces have received hundreds of thousands of pounds to make cells available to Operation Safeguard, even though the prison service hasn't sent any prisoners to occupy them. The government paid Avon and Somerset Police more than a quarter of a million pounds to provide cells, but up to June the 5th, no prisoners were sent there. Essex Police received £219,000, no prisoners were sent there. And South Wales Police got £619,000 thousand pounds but no prisoners arrived now the national police chiefs council told us operation safeguard is a temporary operation activated in exceptional circumstances ensuring overnight places are provided for prisoners when required in a safe and secure way policing continues they say to conduct its operational business without any detriment arresting criminals securing them in custody with well-established plans in place to make best use of available custody facilities across force areas now the ministry of Justice told us that Operation Safeguard 
safeguards has enabled them to deal with exceptional capacity pressures. It says it has delivered the biggest expansion of prison places in a century, including six new jails, and created short-term capacity by doubling up cells where it is safe to do so and delaying non-urgent maintenance work. And all the prisons, like HMP Liverpool, will be refurbished wing by wing, they say, along with other older prisons in the estate. Well, joining me now is the former head of the prison service, Phil Wheatley, who's had more than 50 years' experience of working in the prison system. Does this sound like a temporary measure to you? No, it's not a temporary measure. It's a predictable mess. Uh, the forecast was already there for an increase in population, and the Ministry has simply failed to prepare uh, the right number of cells with the right resources, staff, that is, in place to supervise prisoners in those cells. So we're short well, of accommodation. The government says these are exceptional circumstances. We've had the pandemic, we've had the barristers strike. They couldn't have possibly foreseen this. Uh, it was predicted in their own statistics. So they, every year they give uh, a forecast of what the population is going to be over the next five years. And this growth in the population that's occurred is actually slightly less than their predictions said was going to happen. So they've known about it, and the pandemic in some ways has protected them from it because for a bit the courts weren't operating at full stretch, and crime also dropped during the pandemic. So they were protected um, from the consequences of not moving as fast as they should have done. And on the, on the costs alone, overnight costs in West Yorkshire, for example, uh, 27 times more it costs to put up a prisoner in a, pre -cell, in a police cell than it would do in prison. Does that make any sense to you? It only makes sense because they've otherwise run out of accommodation. It's precisely why you shouldn't ever uh, fail to build and maintain and staff the number of places that you can see you're going to have to have and allowing some headroom. If you simply try and forecast on the basis that we'll just about make it, then obviously even a minor surge in crime somewhere can tip you over the edge. So you've got to allow some and headroom, and they simply haven't done that. The Ministry of Justice says it is building thousands of new prison places, but I suppose the question is, is this how you would design a prison system if you were starting from scratch, putting them up in police cells? Uh, no, it's, it's not. Uh, the reason they are building new places, that's perfectly accurate. They've opened two new prisons this year, now run by the private sector, but built by the ministry. Uh, but they're also closing places and have been closing places since 2013 uh, because they failed to maintain some of the older accommodation. And some of it was too old and too expensive to maintain for them to invest in it. So they've only just about managed to keep pace. So if I look back on... Uh, the amount of accommodation that was there as I left. Roughly what they're providing now with the new prisons in terms of full operational capacity is more or less the same. Yeah. So lots and, of building but no growth. And, That's and just not briefly, a success. It's not entirely unprecedented. It did happen before under Tony Blair when you were Director General of the Prison Service. Yes, and it requires constantly looking ahead and the right investment at the right time. And it's true for all governments. They're often reluctant to invest sufficient to cope with what they can see coming. It's easy to make an announcement about being tough on crime. It's much more difficult to get the money out of the Treasury and recruit the staff you need, which they're also struggling to do at the moment.